Love is Blind Season 6 is wrapped. Going into wedding day, we were only left with three possible couples, Amy and Johnny, Chelsea and Jimmy, and AD and Clay. Love has not been very blind this season, but let's see if being at the altar changes that. I usually say this a little later in my video, but because of the way that this episode played out, I have to say it right now. This video will contain spoilers for the Love is Blind Season 6 finale, so if you haven't seen it yet and you do not want spoilers, save this video and come back after you do. Y'all, so Jimmy saw the light. That was a close damn call. Jimmy, don't ever play with us like that again. So many of us last week were saying we were screaming and clapping at our TV when Jimmy said that he was gonna break up with Chelsea and then we had to roll that back because she pulled him into the deep dark trenches of her love. <laughs> so imagine my fucking surprise when he said I don't want to go to the altar. You're condensing it down to one argument but it's like five or six really big issues. I told you out of confidence about one of my friends, you threw that in my fucking face. You disrespected her, you disrespected me. Now Chelsea did her damn best to flip that conversation around and make it look like she was the victim. But luckily, most of us have been seeing through her at least since last week's episodes. I think there is a general consensus that she was being manipulative and she had some insecurities that she was projecting onto Jimmy for no reason. And she was also being very hypocritical in some ways with the whole my ex is my best friend and she even tried to say that during this breakup oh my i didn't say i hung out with him making jimmy gaslighting him basically a lot of gaslighting coming from her this season she talked about she was walking on eggshells i'm like walking on eggshells with you i can't tell you things that hurt my feelings because you get so upset like what Can we just take a moment to appreciate Jimmy's face right now? He's looking at her like, I'm waiting for you to say what it is. You said everything else on camera. Why can't you say this? And she just says nothing and just stares at him. Like, girl, what are you doing? Jimmy was walking on eggshells. You are the crazy one. You said damn near everything you wanted to say and then some. Hey y'all, it's Nate and welcome back to my little corner of YouTube. You are about to hear my thoughts on the Love is Blind season six finale, but of course I want to hear yours. So feel free to drop a comment below if you do want to participate in the conversation and give this video a like before you go so that I know you enjoyed it. If you want to keep the conversation going after this video, head on over to my Discord server. It's a place for us to chat outside of the YouTube comments and it's free, so why not? Stay tuned to the end of this video if you want details on what we're going to be doing for the reunion. I am dressed for a spring wedding, but let's finish up with Chelsea and Jimmy so that we can get to these weddings. Another thing that Chelsea did during this breakup was try to reduce it down to, well, I'm sorry that I exposed you and your friend's little love triangle or whatever she was saying it was. And it's like, girl, you are still not getting the point. He told you that in confidence out of respect for his friend. Okay. And I'm really sorry that I brought it up on cameras when you asked me not to, to protect your reputation. It isn't my reputation. I don't care about it. It's hers that I care about. That's messed up for any future guy that, that she has anything with or anything I, she I wants. Don't, sorry, I told you guys you had a confidence. little secret, little love triangle. Exactly, like that makes me to reluctant that. to tell you things and that's a true problem. You either don't get it or you're pretending like you don't get it. And I don't know which one of those is worse. And then she was saying, oh, sorry, I ruined your image by saying that. No, it wasn't about Jimmy's image. It was about the respect for his friend. He didn't want to put his friend's business on reality TV because his friend did not sign up to be on reality TV. That's why he told you off cam. And for some reason, that's just not clicking. It's, it's not clicking. I guess I can't snap this finger. And I feel like she did that shit on purpose. She did it out of spite on cam knowing that he told her he didn't want to talk about it on cam. She is not a girl's girl, okay? And you know what? I'm a little triggered by that whole sorry I ruined your image or sorry I ruined your reputation thing. I also watched Married at First Sight this season and a lot of the husbands on this past season actually were doing things to protect their public image and were acting one way on cam and a completely different way off cam, which was backed up by proof because they didn't want their image to look bad on TV. So there are cases where people do that. Just another reason why I'm like, Chelsea, girl, you not ready for this? Go sit down and seek help in the form of a therapist. Either way, I'm happy that Jimmy finally saw the light like the rest of us and that he got out of that situation and that he had people in his circle telling him, yeah, this is not normal and he got out of that. So I'm very happy to see that. I just know Clay's daddy was fine A. F back in the day. Ooh, I just know it. And he's a fast talker. If you think you're beaten, you are. Yeah, if you, you are. think you dare not, you don't. Mm. If you'd like to win but think you can't, it's almost a sense you won't, yeah, right? Yeah. If you think you'll lose, you've lost. 
around the world, you find success begins with a fellow's will. It's all in a state of mind. That's how he was talking his wife into staying in that marriage when he was cheating on her actively. And that's how he was talking those women into getting into his bed. All that fast talking. That's, <laughs> listen, he could come up with something in a millisecond. So I still think that AD and Clay should have said no prior to making it to the altar. And I think all the signs and I think all the red flags, yes, I will bring my red flags to the Love is Blind weddings too. I think all the red flags were there prior to the altar. At Clay's, I guess that was supposed to be their bachelor parties. All his friends kept saying, yeah, I see you changed. Like you changed a lot during this, but not enough. And clearly it ended up being not enough, but definitely not enough change can happen in what? the six to eight weeks, four to eight weeks that this experiment takes place in. Like I really need his friends to be very serious. He did not change that much. You did not see that much growth in this short amount of time. Definitely not enough growth for y'all to think he's ready to get married when he just graduated from Players University last semester. He's just getting started. I have been saying for the last few episodes, I do believe that Clay can change with therapy and I do believe that he wants to want to be married, but it's not enough. He needs to actually be there. And he's simply not there yet. When he was talking to Johnny at that same event, and they were like, yeah, it's just us two left. Wouldn't want to have it any other way. I'm so happy. And Clay was like, yeah, we've both done so much growing and changing during this experiment. And Johnny was looking at him like, I had to... I ain't had to change. I was doing, <laughs> like, I was doing my hand. It's like, oh, you had to change? I don't know why Clay was lumping Johnny into that. Johnny is coasting, and he has been coasting. AD and Clay truly, truly did concern me. Even on their very wedding day, Clay was talking about taking that next step as a man, and AD was saying she's happy that she found someone who wants to fight with her and fight for her, and that it's all worth it in the end. We have said it before. AD is used to and a little bit finds comfort in a struggle love. She feels that the more you have to struggle, the more that it's worth it. And Clay was doing this because he thought it's what he should have been doing at his age. That's why he kept saying things like, that next step is a man. I want to be a man. This is proving that I'm a man. And that's why AD kept saying things like, I'm glad that we work for this and I'll fight for you. You know, I take you to the moon. Just stick with me. It's just proof that she's kind of used to being in that cycle of struggle of. I'm glad she stood her ground on saying she didn't want to date him afterwards, but it does show that she tends to have a habit of, oh, well, we're fighting for this, so it's good. And don't get me wrong. Relationships do require you to, you know, sometimes you got to go into the trenches just a little bit. Sometimes you have to fight for things. Sometimes you're going to have disagreements. But that should not be the baseline of your relationship. Now, when we got to the altar, they asked AD first. So I already knew we was about to get some bullshit. <laughs> Producers definitely know beforehand who's going to say no and who's going to say yes. So that they know, hey, we need to ask the person who's going to say yes first. And the person who's going to say no second. Of course, AD said yes. She's looking gorgeous, very beautiful, all of those things. And the moment that Clay starts saying, oh, this experiment has been so great, I already knew it was going to be a no. Because nobody goes into a speech. Just say yes or no. If it's going to be a yes, you're going to say yes. If it's going to be a no, you're likely going to go into a speech about how the experiment has been a great ride. But you know what? I respect the hell out of Clay for the way that he stated it at the altar. And to give him some credit, I do think he has grown a little bit. Like I said, not enough to get married, but a little bit. Because he was able to say, look, it's not responsible for me to get married to you right now. I know that in my heart, regardless of what everybody else is saying, I know in my heart it would be irresponsible of me to marry you knowing that I'm not ready. I don't think it's responsible for me to say I do. I still need to get to the point where I'm 100% in. I don't care what nobody says. I know fully I'm not ready for marriage. You got to give him props for that. He did not have to say that. He could have said yes to this woman and cheated on her day in and day out just like his daddy did to his mom. No shade, I'm just saying that's what came out during the show. So really, I gained some respect for him in the way that he did that. I am confused on why he was saying, you know, I'm still willing to work through this, we can work through this, because AD had already made it clear a week or two ago that if he said no at the altar, there would be no dating. She doesn't want to go back to being a long-term fiancé or a girlfriend. That's not what she wants with Clay. But I do feel like in that moment he was kind of trying to talk her into it, like, look, I'm still here. I just don't want to get married yet, but I'm still here. But then I'm also confused on why AD is acting like this came out of nowhere when Clay has been saying literally the entire season, I'm afraid I'm going to cheat on you. Is that not <laughs> like, does, are we the only ones seeing that? He wasn't just trying to be quirky. He wasn't in a silly, goofy mood when he said that. He was dead serious. I'm afraid I'm going to cheat on you. I don't want to hurt you. 
listen, stand up guy at the altar, okay? In my opinion. Clay's mom was trying to give him that pep talk after everything happened with AD crying in the damn background. It's what's in here. And if you're not 100%. You know something I thought was interesting, and I don't know why Clay said this, because I don't think this really had any bearing on his no answer. He was saying something like, AD need to get her money up, essentially. Like, I don't really know her finances. Getting married is a business decision. Which, I agree to some extent. Yes, you're going to have to mix your finances. But I don't know why he chose that moment to bring that up. I think the finances, I kind of looked at it, brush it off. But finance is huge to me, and I don't really understand her finances like that. Because at the end of the day, eternity is forever. And if I'm going to be something forever, I want to be locked in 100%. I feel like they had a conversation about finances off cam, and maybe she wasn't willing to share because he said he didn't know much about her finances, but I don't know. I just thought it was weird to bring up in that moment because at the core of it, finances were not the reason you said no. You said no because you a player. To this day, Clay's dad, also a Trevor, by the way. We having a lot of interesting scenarios, scenarios with Trevors this season. His dad still isn't taking responsibility. He's giving that same old, you know, I had a hard life. My dad wasn't there for me. And I get that. If anybody understands having a rough upbringing, it's me. But you can't let that dictate every single decision you make as an adult. At a certain point, you have to move on, whether that's going to be going through therapy, which I highly recommend, or you're going to figure it out on your own. You need to be able to move past the fucked up shit that happened in childhood so that you can have a better adulthood, if that makes sense. Sure, it's all going to, you know, make you who you are. It's always going to be a part of you. Your trauma is always a part of you. You cannot let it lead you. You cannot let it dictate you. And it feels like that's kind of what his dad was doing. I don't know. I don't know the man. But it felt weird for me to see a man of that age being like, well, I was this way because I had a hard life. Okay, well, let's let's take responsibility for our part in it. It was giving very much, if my mom didn't perm my hair when I was three years old, it would have been down my back. Like, meh, the math ain't math. Ain't. Take responsibility for your fuck up. You brought your son with you to cheat on his mother. That's fucked up on a whole other level. But anyway, I'm glad Clay was at least able to take responsibility for his stuff. Okay, so I will admit, I was like, ooh, Amy's dad and Johnny's sister, they doing a little bit much. They... They talking about being family a little too soon. One of these people might say no at the altar. So excited to be your family. <laughs> <laughs> we are family now. But we all knew they weren't saying no at the altar. We all called it. They were going to definitely say yes. They have been this season's green flag couple. And there is not really even much to talk about because we already knew this was going to happen. Since this show is supposed to be an experiment, at this point, what is their track record? Like, what is the, <laughs> what is the success rate? You started off with five couples this season. They slowly, like, <laughs> only two of them made it to the altar. The rest of them dipped beforehand, broke up in some kind of way. I don't even know. Like, I, I, somebody do the math on what the success rate is for the Love is Blind experiment. Because maybe it's not blind and maybe they need to give it up at this point. All in all, my predictions were right. I said that Amy and Johnny would be the only couple to get married out of this season. I think that was pretty obvious pretty early in. So, not surprised at all. I also said that AD was going to say yes. Clay was going to say no. I was a little worried about Jimmy and Chelsea. I felt like he was really under her spell, but I also said he was going to say no. She was going to say yes. And I still think that would have played out that way. I have loved watching this season with all of you. I'm definitely a little sad that it's over, but I hope that I'm going to see some of you for the reunion on Teleparty. I'm going to be sharing the Teleparty link in Discord as well as on my community tab probably about an hour before the reunion starts just so that we can get everything together work out any issues there may be you don't have to join that early but I'll probably be there getting stuff together the reunion is going live for everyone at the same time 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time we will be starting the teleparty stream on the dot like Usher Raymond so if there was ever a time to be on time this is it. I'm also going to be going live this Friday, March 8th. So feel free to stop by if you have a moment. And until then, I will see y'all next week for the reunion. Bye. Let's edit. Let's edit. Oh, I can definitely get this probably out by 8 now. Now my people are trying to take me out, girl. Fuck you. All right. We are ready. Ooh, I'm going to have to color correct this. It looks a little off. Looks a little bit off. That's enough. Oh my god, I feel like this mic is like so in my face, but here we are. Lord, this this tape is not that great. Zero ten would not recommend. I ran out of my good one, so we rocking with this. But truth be told, now that I see how this is acting, I'm gonna go ahead and throw the whole pack away. This is not very good boob tape. Ugh.
my other one works so well this is trash anyway okay but luckily we have all been my wig sliding girl because i don't have no glue i don't have no glue i don't have no glue on this wig i'm not put waste my damn gots to be to sit in the house <laughs> so just don't make fun of me if it starts sliding okay okay hey y'all it's nate and welcome back to my little i love weddings i love weddings i love dressing up for weddings invite me to your wedding I, I'm a good guest, okay? <laughs> and a lot of the men, the husbands on that, on this most, insert that scene from being a fast talker. Did I say Jimmy? I meant Johnny. I'm gonna share the teleparty link. Tele -le -le. Hey.